topic as to why we worship. Morning, everybody. Today I will be bringing forth a topic as to why we worship. And I have six simple points with verses many people would know. To start off, everybody knows Genesis 1 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, one of the main reasons why we worship is because God created everything around us. As said in the verse, He created the heavens and the earth. And later in the chapter, He created the grass and the trees and all the animals. And He created our families and our friends and everyone around us and secondly in philippians 4 6 as eli read before and psalms 100 which convey similar meanings in psalms 100 it says enter in his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise and be thankful to him and bless his name we worship to show our grateful gratefulness gratefulness for him and we're entering into his gates with thankfulness and or thanks thanksgiving and his courts with praise and worship and in philippians 4 6 it says at the end let your requests be made known to god which is a third reason as to why we worship god and matthew 7 7 says ask and it will be given to you seek and you will find knock and it will be opened to you so our requests show as to why we should worship god because all of our worldly requests, although unknown at times, he answers all of our prayers in some shape or form, unless we already have them or we don't need them. Now, stepping away from the generals, from the general area, we're going to, I'm going to go into the specific parts of worship. So going on to the first part that I have mentioned is praying. And we give our requests to prayer, as said before, and he answers them even unnoticed, even when unnoticed at times. And in 1 Thessalonians 5.17, it says, pray without ceasing. So our lives should always have prayer in them, and every worldly care and supposed needs that can be sent up to him, because we know that he can provide. Also, prayer is the thanking of God for everything that he's given and the things that he has not given to us. For example, of things he has given to us, good health and good travels and good weather and things that he has not given. For example, bad weather, bad travels and bad health. And in Psalms 145 verses 10, it says, all your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your saints shall bless you. And as said in the, in the beginning that we are one of his works and that we should praise him. Also, another main reason that many people say in their prayers is, and in your son's name we pray, amen. And in John 3, 16, it says, and everybody probably knows this verse, it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So we're thanking him for sending his son, his only beloved son, to die on the cross for our sins. Another thing is our sins can be forgiven through a simple prayer. And in Mark 2, 7, it says towards the end of the verse, who can forgive sins but God alone? And it shows that God can forgive our sins. Now going on to another part of the worship of a worship service is the singing. Our singing is a way of praise by lifting our voices. And all the songs we sing are showing how grateful we are to him. In Psalms 33, 3, it says, sing him a new song in the beginning. And at the end, it says with a shout of joy. So this shows that we should be joyful. And in James 5.13, it says, is anyone among of you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone among you cheerful? Let him sing psalms. This is showing that we're joyful when we're coming together with him. It shows that we want to come together to worship him. And the Lord, as said in Isaiah 12.2, the Lord is our song and our salvation. And another reason as to why we worship is because we fear him. And in uh, Revelation 19.5, it says, Then a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all you his servants, and those who fear him, both small and great. It shows that no matter how big or how small, that if you follow the Lord, that you fear him. And as Luke just did before the... Uh, Lord's Supper is there as remembrance of God's sacrifice. And as Luke read before in Matthew 26, 26 through 27, 
And Jesus said, take eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, drink from it, all of you. This is so just so that we can remember that, as I said before, that God sent his only beloved son to the earth for, to die for all of our sins. And going into the uh, scripture slash lessons that are given throughout uh, a worship service, it says in 2 Timothy verses three, six, chapter 3, verse 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. All scripture, as said in the scripture, is said by God, and everything God says is useful. And the lesson, what I'm doing is taking the scriptures and conveying them into a meaning to... Um, help pe pe bring people to God. And Ephesians 4, 25 says, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor for we are members of one another. So we want to speak in the truth. And in John 14, 6, it says, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So we should speak in the name of God in the way, in the name of the way, the truth, and the life. God is our life, and he is the reason why we're on this earth, and is hence why we send praise up to him. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Nolan. Now, our brother Milo Adams, the sovereignty of the Lord. Your sound, brother. Sorry about that. For my lesson, I'd like to start with looking at Jeremiah's life. In Jeremiah 12, Jeremiah wrestles with a question you may be familiar with. Why does the way of the wicked prosper? Why are those happy who deal so treacherously? Jeremiah sees his nation and all the world falling into wickedness and rebellion. As David says in Psalm 14, they have all turned aside. They have together become corrupt. There is none who does good, no, not one. It seems man is all the way gone. And this was overwhelming to those whose words we can read, such as Jeremiah. It's easy for this to overwhelm us today. There is wickedness everywhere hateful, selfish violence, open rebellion against God and religion. The governments and organizations we see in the world often even encourage things we know are against God's will. Jeremiah struggles with the way the world is, but he is not truly hopeless. I'd like to read a passage from Jeremiah's book of Lamentations. I'll read Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 through 27. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should hope and wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man to bear the yoke in his youth. To see the light in his worst times, Jeremiah looks to God and has peace. Throughout the Bible, People disgusted or overwhelmed by the world find peace in its creator. Let's look at the creation of the world and what the world is. We read the creation story in Genesis and see that God made a perfect world. Genesis 131 says, Then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. The world needed nothing. Adam and Eve's Garden of Eden was a beautiful place with no problems. And then quickly, comes Satan in Genesis 3. The deceiver helped sin into the world, and the world would never again be a perfect place. It was the wicked place that Jeremiah knew, and we know. But we know Jeremiah did not have faith in vain. He was part of God's great plan to redeem us. It culminates with Christ's death on the cross, paying for us with blood. We can all respond to this plan and be saved. In King Nebuchadnezzar's dream, which Daniel interpreted through God in Daniel chapter 2, he saw a great image with a head of fine gold 
chest and arms of silver, belly and thighs of bronze, legs of iron, feet partly of iron and partly of clay. He watched a stone be cut out without hands and strike the image in its feet so that it was destroyed and blown away so that no trace of its materials was found. The stone that struck the image then became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. The head of gold was Nebuchadnezzar and God had given a kingdom, power, strength, and glory. The parts under that were part kingdoms that came after Nebuchadnezzar. The stone, in the days of those kings, the God of heaven would set up a kingdom which, Neb which would consume all those kingdoms and stand forever. No matter what evil or danger we may face while we live here, no matter what evil ideas our society may adhere to, we are part of a kingdom that will stand forever. The church transcends whatever place or nation we are part of, and its king will lead us into eternity with him if we stay true to him. And yet, we can still look at the evil of the world and be discouraged. It's easy to hear about or see what is going on in the world and feel like things are hopeless, like this world is as far removed from God as it ever could be. But I think God can still be found in the things around us here. Now I would like to read from Psalm 104. Psalm 104, starting in verse 10. He sends the springs into the valleys. They flow among the hills. They give drink to every beast of the field. The wild donkeys quench their thirst. By them, the birds of the heavens have their home. They sing among the branches. He waters the hills from his upper chambers. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of your works. He causes the grass to grow for the cattle and vegetation for the service of man, that he may bring forth food from the earth and wine that makes glad the heart of man, oil to make his face shine, and bread which strengthens man's heart. The trees of the Lord are full of sap, the cedars of Lebanon which he planted, where the birds make their nests, the stork has her home in the fir trees, the high hills are for the wild goats, the cliffs are a refuge for the rock badgers. He appointed the moon for seasons, the sun knows it's going down. You make darkness and it is night, in which all the beasts of the forest creep about. The young lions roar after their prey and seek their food from God. When the sun rises, they gather together and lie down in their dens. Man goes out to his work and to his labor until the evening. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your possessions. This great and wide sea in which are innumerable teeming things, living things both small and great. There the ships sail about. There is that Leviathan which you have made to play there. These all wait for you, that you may give them their food in due season. What you give them, they gather in. You open your hand, they are filled with good. You hide your face, they are troubled. You take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. God sustains everything. He still has control over this place. I can go outside and see the plants and animals and consider that God made them at the beginning and they've gone on all this time. When a lamb is born today, it knows what to do and its ancestry could be traced all the way back to the first of their kind God made from the earth. It's good to hear birds sing. They declare their maker's praise. Jesus says in the Sermon on the Mount, which can be found in Matthew 6, look at the birds of the air for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to your stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, and yet I say to you, not even Solomon in all his glory was arrayed like one of these. Earlier in the same sermon, Jesus said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Those who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness will be filled. Do not be discouraged by the things of the world, but see our awesome God's providence everywhere and take hope and courage in the fact that the world is in God's hands and he has set before us a promised way to be with him. I hope and pray that this has given some encouragement to you all and that you all will have peace in the Lord of all the earth this week and forever. God bless you all.